Good day, viewers. Welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. I am Manir Dan Ali. My guest today is engineer Tasi U Saad Gidari Wudil, the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. So an engineer himself who has worked for 24 years in the power sector. He's also taught briefly and he is now retired and fully facing his mandate as president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Engineer Tasi, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I mean, just meeting you on the street, one wouldn't say you are an engineer. I mean, uh, how, what fired your imagination to get into the engineering profession? It's just the zeal to create something out of nothing. And you know, we engineers, we, we sit down, think of something. Okay, this thing can work this, solve this problem with it. So right from when I was in primary school, my primary school teacher, Mrs. Uh, Iburu, when we were in primary school, she used to call me Batulang Aji. Because right. I always like to put my hands on something. Right, you try yes. to create yes. something to create or something. to solve yes. problems. Yes. And so it's from there that you started developing the interest and eventually at uh, ATBU you studied uh, electrical engineering. Yes, I started with that. Then I went to right from, from, from one, I was uh, admitted into the technical school in Udil, Government Technical College, Udil. So from there, I started having my hands on real engineering right from metal work, woodwork. Then after two years, I moved to uh, science secondary school, where uh, in 1983, I, I graduated, I finished my secondary school uh, with eight credits in sciences. Then I moved, that time it was late for me to go to ABU, that is SBS. Right. It was yes. late for me when the result came out because I was I, I didn't feel any form. I didn't do jam, so I had to go to the College of Arts uh, and Sciences, that is CAS, kind of School of Preliminary Studies. There, I spent a year. Then, of course, uh, even the vice principal who admitted me told me right that look, you are not going to stay in this school. So I because didn't know why. Because he could see your yeah, results, he saw, probably. Yeah, he saw my results. Yes. So I, I said, no, I, I want to stay. So after a year, I found out that um, uh, my admission is slightly skewed towards ABU. And uh, I became apprehensive of going to ABU. because Why? Yeah, because if you don't go to ABU in northern Nigeria, you're not going to university. So me, I also, I, and I saw people in the secondary school I attended who were nobody, were not nothing. They couldn't match me. Right. And they're still in the ABU. Yes. So I said, no, what is the difference? So let me go to another place. Yeah. So uh, after I spent a year, I, I heard about uh, Federal University of Technology, Bauchi, where they said, once you come in, if you are not serious, you get missing. They call it Bermuda Triangle. Right. So you so I said, easily let me get go kicked to, yes, out of the yes. so let me go there. major. So let me go there and see yes. how it is. Mm. So I now applied to, to, to ATBU. Yes. Before I was admitted, it was changed. Uh, it was Federal University of Technology. Before I was admitted, it was it was changed by Buhari administration, military administration. Yes. 1983, to, yes, to uh, ATBC, Abubakar Tafa Baleo College, ABU. Because those federal universities, about six of them, were merged with were established, yes, affiliated, to established to, yes. So I, I, I now went in as ATBC, and uh, in 1991, I was able to graduate as Awukatapa Balewa University in Electrical Electronics Engineering. And then you also took a second degree from the same university. Yes. I, I, after I left, I went back to Kano. I worked... First, I started teaching in technical school. I was teaching electrical installation. Right. Me, I liked practical things. I opened a workshop on my own to repair television. Mind you, nobody taught us how to repair electronics in the university. 
So it's just trial and error? Yes. No, no. I was using my basic electronics in the university and I was going to a repairer at Zurod. There is somebody who, who was very well known in repairing only Sony television. Television, right. So I went and attached myself to him. I started learning how to repair television and all electronics. So, in fact, I developed a workshop and I got job with the, with, the, with the Ministry of Education again. I left technical school. I came back to headquarters of the Gidomburtala uh, Ministry Works Department. So I worked there for three years. Then I got a job with Bayero University to, to be a computer maintenance engineer. Right, not to uh, lecture. Yes. And, 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 and surprisingly, I never touched computer apart from the one I, I used to do my project. But... I got the job. So did you have to, again, teach yourself computer? Yes, or I did. So as to I major did. up? I did. I was, I was, I was uh, frequenting uh, British Council Library in Kano. And at that time, there was this magazine. They call it PC World. So when I saw the advertisement that the, they want to employ a computer maintenance engineer in BUK, so I applied. It was an internal process. Somebody gave me the invitation. So I applied. When I applied, I was invited for interview. So I equipped myself with information from that magazine because I took previous copies, learned mm. computer. There was a column on computer, on computer maintenance. Right. So I taught myself. I, I realized. And we're talking of the time when computer, computer is was not, not much, common knowledge. It's not common. So, but what I did was. I just related computer with electronics. And so I learned the rudiments of the parts of the computer. So when I went for the interview, mind you, I graduated from ATB with a third class. So I... What happened? It's just, I was okay. president of it's student union. I was story. president of student union right. finally, okay. my final year. Even. Right. So it is not a problem to me. So when I went for the interview in Bayer University, the, the a professor, one professor in Defru, is Cameroonian, he was the, in charge of uh, physics. Uh, professor Yohuza, who was VC yes. at the time, mm. he was dean of science that right. time, a mathematician. Mm. So I was invited for the interview. When I went for the interview, uh, the technical person was in Diflu because he was a physics lecturer right. and, so he and, knows and, and he knows about the computer. About computer and, 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 and he asked me questions. In fact, when I answered the questions, he just dropped his pen. He asked me, how comes you go third class? I said, well, that's what I want. That's what yes, I, I was am. awarded. Yeah. I am. Then Professor Yahuza was looking, was doing something. He now raised his head. He said, which university? I said, ATP. He said, forget about them. We know what, what is happening there. So I got the job. Unfortunately, for the Bayer University, I spent only two month and that's when you moved to nepa Nepa. so i moved that to Nepal. national electric yes. power authority yes. 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 Or yes i was yeah i was employed we were taken to kainji we were trained for two years and lucky for me i brought my experience from those workshops that i i built uh, from the my experiences of repairing television and all these things i brought it to bear on the power sector mm -hmm. i was part of the allied group in nepa what time, does that mean? That allied group is protection, control, and meeting. They are the ones to make sure that the system is working well. And most of their job is a lot of thinking. because it's Are they the ones who stuff. ensure that there are no cases of what has become common now? That's yes. the total blackout? Yes, they are part of it and they are, they are part of the problem. Because the protection engineer will want to make sure that nobody is killed. Once there is a fault, it is cleared. And clearing a fault means switching off. So you know when you switch off, people don't like it. But most of that switching off is because something wrong happened. And you don't want disaster. At this point, I think it's just appropriate for us to take a short break and continue the interesting conversation when we return. Thank you.
Welcome back. It is still 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television, and our guest today is the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Tasiu Saad Gidari Udil. Uh, engineer, before we went on break, we were talking about some of the complexities of the power sector where you spend a large chunk of your working career there. Yes. For most Nigerians, they just can't understand why it is looking as if it's impossible to fix the power problem. I mean, under Obasanjo, billions, I think they were mentioning $16 billion. The governments, the administrations that came after him, more money has been thrown at it to date. And when countries like India are talking of generating gigawatts, even from the solar uh, energy, Nigeria is not able to generate more than 10 or up to even 10 uh, thousand megawatts from the conventional source of electricity, hydro, gas, and all of that. Why is it intractable? Well, uh, the Nigerian power sector problem is multifaceted problem, just like uh, Nigeria's problem. One, uh, the customer is a problem. How? Yes. I will explain. The customer is a problem. Government is a problem. Uh, the operators, there are problems. And even the financial institutions financing these things are problems. Are you saying this because you came from a regulator's I mean, background because he seems to say the regulators are okay? No, well, they are part of The regulator is a problem. I must tell you. So, uh, uh, one, the customer. It is all over the world. It is a fact by development uh, 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 economists, they have known it, that naturally the consumer of electricity would like to consume electricity free. If we are, are going to be sincere, me and you, we would rather have free electricity. Well, we know it's not realistic. It's not realistic, but everybody wants to have free electricity. That is one. Two, that is why you have fill fridge. There's so much stealing of electricity. In fact, in Nigeria, we don't have electricity theft as much as they have in India. There's a whole book I have that is called Electricity Theft. If you see the kind of stealing of electricity, you'll be surprised. When I was in service, there was a steel company under the Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company that installed a 15 MVA transformer without the knowledge of the distribution company. And the, the, the MD of that company wrote a petition to NEC. That's the Electricity Regulatory yes, Commission. Yes, yes. To show you that people can go to any length to steal electricity. And people are not ready. Uh, 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 people are, are owing the electricity distribution companies on the pretense that they were not given electricity. But if you are metered properly, you will find out that you cannot consume electricity. The meter will not move if you don't consume. So you are saying that actually the villages you see where they don't even off put up the, the bulbs yes. are like the small time thieves, if you will. Because you are saying there is industrial scale stealing. There is industrial of, scale stealing. Of the there, there is, in fact, we have had a situation whereby a, a, a very prominent politician in this country slapped a staff of a distribution company because he went to the house and asked for the bill. And he was lucky. I was not in the, in the, in the, in the operations. If I was, I was in the union, we would have blacklisted and go and disconnect that man's house. I have had a governor beating a, a, a staff of a distribution company. But you see, even the PHCN staff or the distribution company staff are not without <coughs> any blame because some of them will do a lot of illegal they are, things they are part and of the also problem. collect I, I've and told money. You, everybody has his pockets. own problem. Right. The, the distribution companies, 
some of the distribution companies, some, some of the distribution companies has no business in power business. They don't know how it works. Naturally, in Nigeria, we would like to have a business that will earn quick returns. returns. So, but power business is an incremental return business. You just have to be patient. In fact, if you don't want to uh, uh, plan for your kids, don't go into power business. Because there could be, it could be your kids, your grandchildren that will gain from it. So it is an incremental thing. People, you just don't go and say, we must get this thing. You have to invest. Are we seeing investment? The distribution companies that come in, how many of them are doing investment? Even to have good customer relationship, they don't. And it's proving so impossible to just get meters. Even. Yes. And, and metering, that is investment. Metering has been a big problem. I, ha I wonder if I was talking to South Africa and she was asking uh, what's the level of electrification in Nigeria. I told her 40 to 50 percent. Then she now said, okay, I said, the only thing is our metering is bad. So how can you sell electricity without meter? So, but in Nigeria, we have estimated, we have worked around all these things. NEC has tried. NEC itself. That's the regulator. As a, the, regulator. Mm. the regulator has its own problem. And why is that? One, some of the people in the, in the regulation don't even know what is regulation. Don't even know. A regulator does not get involved in operations. It is involved in setting the standards, making sure that the standards are followed, and see it if there are conflicts, resolve conflicts. Definitely, electricity business, there must be conflict. So it's the job of the regulator to settle conflicts. Yes. But, but you haven't said anything on the generation as well, because that seems to be the sticking point. We are not even generating enough. It's when we started generating a bit more that we are told again that actually there are problems problem with transmission. Yes, the, regular, the, the, the generator, one, today, as I'm telling you today, the market operator or the system operator cannot tell you which particular unit is operating at a time. The SCADA, that is the, the supervised control and mm. data acquisition, that you'll be able to monitor those units from different uh, locations in your own center. The SCADA has a problem. The SCADA is not fully functional. Units, um, you, 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 you just make a call to the, con to, to the, to the, to the uh, power, power plant, which unit is on bar? That means which unit is generated? Well, how will you know? And, 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 and yes, the generators are faced with problems also because one, they buy gas from gas, gas plants and they have to pay and their money is not coming back because the customer is not paying the distribution company and the distribution company is not paying uh, the, 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 the generation company. So you can see that it's, it's a myriad of problems that we are entangled in it. And we have to tell ourselves. So is private, uh, privatization doesn't seem to have been the magic bullet it is taught because it, it hasn't is, solved the problem. It, it has not solved the problem. It's and it has never promised to solve the problem. That and so true. many billions you, have yes. gone into just I, maintaining I must tell you, anybody who is selling privatization will never tell you it has all the solutions. But it will tell you the main problems it can solve. But that is when you have a transparent system. We don't have a transparent system in this country. That's the main problem we have. If you are asking uh, 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 an investor to, tell, to give you, to, 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 to come and invest, you have to be transparent. Because I will not come and invest my money where I know I'm not going to get things out. And things are done behind the scene. So how do we get out of this problem? Because... Nigeria cannot go anywhere without adequate power. And as you've just been mentioning, there are so many problems and we are all kind of responsible for it. What's the way forward? The way forward is, one, it's like chicken and egg. But we have to look at the way the, 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 the wheel is moving and try to stop it at a particular place and see we can correct. Uh, as I said, 
the regulator is the heart of the system now. Because he's at the center, everybody reports to him. The regulator will have to be well informed. He has to, what, what, what uh, Scott Henley says, is well known. He's a well known writer on, on regulation. He says, you must lead. The regulator must lead. We have seen situations whereby, on so many occasions, the electricity regulator is not leading. It's central bank that is leading. Central bank is the one giving out, uh, doing something on, 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 on metering. Central bank has no business in coming into power sector to say this. If so you maybe are, it's probably filling the vacuum. It could see a vacuum. Yes, it fits in. And then it's, it fits in. Yeah. So the regulator is supposed to take charge. And government should look for people who, are, who have capacity and put them as regulators. Because we have had situations whereby some commissioners don't even know about the commission. When so they it's were just job, job for the boys. Yes. That is just politicians yes, get yes. appointed Some in of them. there. And they come, they come, and they don't even respect the staff. The staff will advise them, and they will not listen. Probably so, they are more interested in something else of other course, than Of the, course, of course. And they see the staff as problems. Today, as I'm telling you, uh, most of us have left. Like me. Like I voluntarily, yes, I voluntarily there. left. Many of us. As I'm talking to you today, there are people who are put in their papers, they will leave. But what about the other side, the big government itself? Is there enough commitment to move the power sector? Is there enough commitment to like, have a huge increase in terms of the generation. generation? Yes, government is trying on that. But also, you know, the, the power sector is, 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 is a chain from generation to utilization. Now, from generation, what are the problems? Transmission, what are the problems? Transmission is in the hand of government. Distribution is in the hand of the businessmen, sector. the mm. private sector. So uh, how do you help the private sector to work? By giving them transparent regulations, policies that they can work and making it easy for them. Uh, the generation is in the hands of the private sector. How do you make them perform? Help them to generate, to be able to generate. But we have sad situations whereby physical problems within the network will stop, will hamper the generation people from sending their generation electricity to the consumer. And there is also this other big elephant in the room. The union in the electricity sector seems too strong for the good of Nigeria because imagine the last strike over some promotion. You are holding the whole country to ransom. Uh, Manil, I'm a unionist. I know. When I left NEC, when I left TCN, I, when I left NEC, I was trying to set up a union for the staff of NEC. That was one of my sins in NEC. And today, there is no staff of NEC that can tell the management of NEC, you are wrong. But are you saying like the last strike yes. over the issue of promotion in one small corner of the power sector, the transmission company, does that justify grounding the whole country, shutting the whole uh, power system? We have had situations whereby the unions were involved in tozos like this. The management was able to manage. And sometimes it gets out of hand, I must tell you. There are some overzealous leaders on both sides who do not see things. And as a leader, I believe most of my work as a leader is crisis management. And if you have situations like that, it is not that I must get what I, I, I request and you will not get what you request. No, take half. Take, let me take half. Please go arrest. Next time we'll come back. So the unions, they have their own problems. And the management, they have their own problems. But I am of the opinion that if there is a healthy management relationship, uh, union management relationship, labor wouldn't have gone into that. 
level wouldn't have gone into that. Uh, uh, the MD of TCN, the management of TCN, majority of them are my mates, are my friends. Uh, I don't really exactly know what happened at that time, but I'm sure uh, much later they have learned lessons, they have worked together with the unions, and uh, I believe uh, it is going to be a symbiotic thing. The union is always fighting for its own members. And but not to the, it shouldn't be to the detriment of the whole country. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It will, they should be considerate. They should be considerate to look at it. Look, we are rendering essential service. At the same time, don't don't forget that it is from that essential service they get money to feed their family. If they don't have what to feed their family. How can you do this? So um, they would rather bring down the whole no, no, house no, no, no. on everybody's head? We are, we are head? not saying. Sometimes, yes. sometimes uh, 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 it's when, when you put yourself in their shoes. And, and if they say, okay, we have the key. We have the key. And we must get what we want. That's very bad. I want to touch briefly on your current position. Society of Engineers, yes, and especially in northern Nigeria, where professions, the professions are still very weak. What are you doing about that? Especially at a time when there are so many people who are even out of school, talkless of even doing the STEM, the science and technology, engineering and mathematics kind of courses. Yes, uh, honestly, I must uh, uh, thank. Uh, the government of Kano State for setting up what we call the science secondary schools. And as I'm talking to you today, 90% of medical doctors, pharmacists, engineers you see from Kano State, they are products of those schools. So uh, we need to have concerted effort, deliberate effort to see that we, we encourage students, male and female, uh, from primary school purpose to start studying sciences and encourage them. Uh, to that effect, the Nigerian Society of Engineers is working with an NGO to do what we call STEM Give Back. Uh, we are going to establish uh, ICT centers in the six geopolitical zones. Uh, the one for Northwest is definitely going to deal. That's my, 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 my place. So isn't yeah. that... Uh, yes, I have to be selfish. Below. No, no, I yeah. have to be selfish. Because I, I, my people will have to know that I have come and sat on this seat and, and this is what I brought for them. Uh, we are taking one to Lafia. In fact, we are going to do the groundbreaking tomorrow. The Emir of Lafia is going to... The center is going to be named after the Emir of Lafia. Uh, in honor of the president of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. We are going to build that and uh, it's going to be an ICT center where you'll be able to teach so many things to primary school pupils and secondary school students. I and think on that note, yes. our time is yes, up. Yes, I have to bring the program to a close. Thank you so much for coming to Trust Television. Thank you for having me. Viewers, that is it. Keep a date with us.